Today, I want to share with you 7 secret mixing concepts that made me with the producers and I'm sure it will help you too. This is one of the most difficult things for any producers to learn. There are even people who have spent hundreds of hours on it, yet they still fail. And yes, you guessed it right getting your bass to the right level. It's extremely simple with this method. You may have an untreated room or maybe headphones that have a sub annual loft that cuts your bass like a samurai blade on a birthday cake. But fear not my friend, because I shall come to your aid. Step 1. Get Yulin loudness meter or similar. I suggest Yulin loudness meter because it is free. Step 2. Get your favorite track that has ultimate low end. On your favorite track, put an EQ and do a low pass. Pick between 6 to the 100 hertz, isolating low end. Step 4. Put Yulin loudness meter right after the low pass. Click on settings and decrease the range, around 20. Step 5. Note the relationship between kick and the bass. Step 6. Replicate the same steps on the low end of your track. Step 7. Adjust the volume levels of your kick and bass to match your reference track. I like to keep my bass 2-3 dB less louder than the reference track because reference track is mastered and that low end gets pushed when you master the track. This video is made possible by Absolute Vodka. When they reach out to me and talk about their concept, Born to Mix, it sounded very interesting. After all, I thought mixing is what I do all day, every day. So they presented me with a challenge to spill the beans mm -hmm. on my top mixing tips and tricks and that's precisely how this video came into the existence. Big shout out to Absolute Vodka for being the cool cats they are and making this video happen. I hope my mixing shenanigans in this video bring a smile to your face and some useful skills to your mixing game. Number two, push and pull dynamics. This is another one that you won't see many people talk about and this is one of those pro producer secrets. Let's listen to this. Let's say I want to bring the sound forward. If you just volume up the sound or add a distortion, it can sound muddy and take over the sound. The way to keep everything clean is like this. You need a transient shaper. More specifically, you want a transient shaper that you can focus on a specific band. I shown this method in one of my shorts and I used spiff, but this time I'm gonna use neutron shaper just to create some variation. Because I want to bring this front, I want to focus on the higher band. So we're gonna create another band, focus on this high area, push this up. This will add a lot of loudness. There is a reason you need to use the second step, adding a clipper or a limiter. If you want to keep crunchy sounds, you can use vintage limiters. In this case, I'm going to go for the classic. You can even go for transient emphasis. I'm not going to use it, but I'm going to get a bit softly. Now what happens is we are going back to the original level. Right? And see how much difference this makes, even though we keep the similar loudness levels. enjoying the video up to now consider giving like and subscribe it really helps a ton number three using band distortions this little tool over here is one of the most used device for me in ableton saturating everything can sound overwhelming in a mix but saturating the area that you need and taking off the parts that you don't need that is where it is at and for that overdrive is extremely useful take a listen to this This plug sounds quite good, but you know what could be better if it could have a bit more saturation on the high end, make it a bit brighter. If you slap an OTT, it will mess up your dynamics, cause these messier phases. You can of course always take the low end and focus on the mid area. For my ears, it's not pretty enough. Let's try the same thing with overdrive. What this little device does, it will distort this area and this area will be kind of cut off. If you for example make it 100% here, you see what's happening? It acts like a bandpass filter and distortion at the same time. And then you can make the sound more dynamic or less dynamic. And then you can of course have the tonal control and drive control so you can decorate more or less brighter or darker so all the controls that you will need to get the sound where you want it pretty quickly let's do this for this one get that area nailed down then 
you can bring down the drive width so that you can blend in that saturated bandpass sound with much less artifacts. Really, the most underrated device that Ableton has ever created. Number four, sweeping to hell. When I started producing, I was very scared of resonance sounds because I thought when I finish a track, people will mock me because I left these resonance sounds. So I used resonance sweeping to find the resonance sounds in every single channel and spend countless of hours trying to make my sounds less resonant. I didn't realize that this actually made my tracks duller and duller. When you play something, just listen. If there's something that needs to be taken off, you should be able to hear it quite fast, right? And then you can go take it off. Rather than search for frequencies, just listen. If nothing bothers you, there is nothing to remove. Number five, having a deep ambience. I receive this question all the time on my social media. The artist A or the producers B, they don't have any pads, anything, but they have this real deep, beautiful ambience. I don't know how they do it. Well, I know how they do it. Let me show you. So I'm working on this new track. Cool and so on, but I need an ambience. I need depth in this mix. The way the pros get it actually creating a return channel and creating the depth in that return channel from the instruments that you have. In this case, I have this ambience channel. First look, it could be overwhelming, but it's quite straightforward what I'm doing here. We are sending a couple of instruments here. The most important is bass, but we are sending hats and later I'm gonna send the synths and so on. The first thing is you want to squash down all the dynamics. So it is like a flat line. So we are using Clipper first. Everything is much more flatter. And then I'm taking off highs and lows. From here, you can use any creative effects. I like to use choruses, phasers, flangers. In this specific case, I'm using a chorus. And then to make it even more ambient, I'm using Pro R. Everything is on the behind. I still want to scratch it down a bit more. So the second Pro R. We are sitting inside a big hole now. And from here, because the reverb dispersed the sound quite a bit, I'm using another EQ to cut again lows and highs. The final step is Ozone Imager, so that I can control the stereo image, pushing a bit highs, pushing down a bit lows. Because this is a sustained sound, you would like to have the groove in the sound. Easiest way, such a need to kick. It's subtle, it doesn't need to be really pumping. Listen the depth and the difference this adds to the track. Without. Cool, isn't it? Number six, learn to use dynamic and static mixing. There is one rule of thumb that works most of the time when it comes to mixing. When the sound is dynamic, consider dynamic mixing. When the sound is static, consider static mixing. What is dynamic mixing? Dynamic mixing actually can be two different things. The first thing could be using like a dynamic EQ. So the changes that you make is dynamic. The second interpretation could be dynamic mixing. So the decisions that you are making during the track changes depending on where you are in the track. The one that I mentioned here is using the first one. Let's listen to this. All right, there is one thing that immediately hits my ear. It is this one. It's a dynamic sound, it just comes on in and out, right? And this one crashes with the pads. Now the pads are static and the sound beep is dynamic, which means that we can actually use dynamic mixing for the beeps. I'm gonna just bring in Pro MB. You can use really any multiband compressors. When the beep hits, I want to duck that area of the pads down so that we can hear the bleep a bit more. Create a band like this, input from the beats, Right? And then you can actually go for expert and audition. Then you can hear actually where it is. This high end of the beeps, I want to hear those ones really. And then you turn this off and then. Right? I want more maybe even this area. Without. Now, I obviously exaggerate a little bit, right? So that you can clearly hear what's going on. What you could probably do is make it less aggressive and probably boost a bit here. Perfect. The same thing over here with the horn. And this one this time crashes with this. 
and the same thing over here, param b, put it there, listen from horns. Together. Amazing. Now, what about the static mixing part? Here, this driving plug and the pads. They're always playing, so you cannot use dynamic mixing now. Now we have to create separation by just simple EQ, right? Focus on the area that you want to put from with each sound. In the driving plug part, right around here, I'm gonna push forward a little bit, which means that now I can copy this part on the pads, bring down scale down, create a bit opening for that sound on the pads. Right? Now we can hear both. Perfect. Number seven, learning how to select sounds. And selecting sound is about understanding the character of the sound. If you simplified it really, it's about the richness of the sound and duration of the sound. And for that, we have this chart. So in the left side, we have richness. On the right hand side, we are duration. So short and dark sounds will be low energy and rich and long sounds will be high energy. Now, this is something I really explain in depth in another video. I'm gonna put it over here. Take a look at that video to understand this concept much more in detail.